welcome back to Center. My name is Sarah and I am a ballet teacher and former professional dancer. Shown here is a dancer standing in first position with her heels apart. This is because she's hyperextended. However, I strongly recommend you try to put your heels together to build up strength in your inner thighs and to keep your turnout better. If you hyperextend your legs, you're actually turning in your thigh bone in order to accomplish that hyperextended look. Hyperextension is a beautiful look with your leg in the air, but when you're standing on it, you should try to accomplish a straight line through your leg for balance and strength. Next, I show a foot that's called sickled. This is an incorrect foot position. With young children, we call it a banana foot. It does kind of have that look. When you do that, you're overstretching your ligaments and have an improper position in terms of aesthetic beauty. The next position is correct. The heel is forward and up. I thought I'd point this out to you, especially if you're a beginner, so that you know the proper position to achieve. The last photo in the series of legs and feet is just a reminder, putting it all together. I hope you enjoy this new segment. I have slowed down a couple as well, just to get you a closer look to be able to follow along again in slow motion. Be sure to repeat the segments as many times as you like. Thank you. To start center, we usually begin with a tendu in order to find our center. These are tendus from first position with a weight transfer. The two tendus a la seconde, which means to the side. Remember to push on the way out, pull on the way in. We lower to second and pull on the way back. Three sets. Transfer. And then we conclude the first set with a porter bra from first to second position. Be sure to keep your elbows up, allonger, which means to lengthen or stretch out. Or you're bringing on zamba and repeat, starting on your left side. Push. Transfer. Feel well forward, standing leg, nice and stretched up, all the way through your hips. Third set, slightly different, you may notice, because she did the third tendu, lowers, transfers to the other leg, and port de bras, and timing with the music. Now, on bar number one, we did learn about the plumb line where your weight is centered. When you're standing on one leg, the ribbon or the plumb line will shift over to your standing leg, just as a reminder. And now let's repeat, keeping that in mind. You always want to feel the energy through the toes and intrinsic muscles as you lower the foot and you push to return to first. Keep your center over your standing leg, which means keeping your core muscles engaged. As you learned in the ballet bar one video. Be sure to breathe, don't hold your breath. I like to put the hands on the waist just to kind of find and locate that core for yourself. You can always try it with the arms in second position. Feel free to modify as you practice this video more. Fully point the feet. Those are really strengthen your feet.
promenade, two pivots per side of the room. Last time we learned the, the corners and the sides. The sides of the Vaganova system are the odd numbers. We're to promenade en dehors, which is away from the standing leg. Shown here is a diagram of the studio, which also relates to the stage. This is the Baganova diagram of the mirror audience in downstage. They have these diagrams and other syllabus as well. This is just the one I happened to learn. Um, what the dancer is going to do is she's going to do her spring points in the directions of the room. She will start at side one, which represents the audience, continuing in a clockwise manner through the numbers facing each side or corner. The corners are always even numbers and the sides are always odd numbers. So in reverse or counterclockwise, turning left, she'll be going the other way, one, eight, seven, etc. as a countdown back to the original side. The most common corner that we use on stage in in a classroom, I believe, is because most people like to travel or turn on their right, is the upstage corner, upstage means away from the audience, to the downstage corner, and then the second is the one traveling leftwards. Corners six to two and four to eight are the most commonly used diagonals in ballet, in particular six to two as I mentioned because it's turning right. The other thing to keep in mind is this little box shown here it's actually not the literal corners and sides of the room. It's an imaginary box around yourself and you're relating to the corners of the box that surround yourself. So a lot of dancers make the mistakes when they're first starting ballet that they literally take and face the corners exactly of the space. But most dance studios and any stage that I know of is not square. So we have to modify it to ourselves, and the purpose of that was to get the best line and angle for your body in the rotated positions. Okay, let's get going, and we'll go on to learn the spring points facing those corners as a fun exercise. Thanks.
Okay, I just want to say that spring points look like an easy step, and it is often a step we give to youngsters. However, when we do it with turnout, your back up straight, your core engaged, your shoulders aligned, your collarbones high, etc., that we expect out of teens and adults becomes more of a technical challenge. What I love about this step is it prepares you for jumping. It also is a quicker and obvious transfer of weight. A simple polonaise is based on a dance done in three-quarter time, also known as a waltz. I teach this before waltz turn from the corner. I'm showing here a tendu soutenu as part of the movement and a releve just to build up a little bit of strength as your preparation. So practice this first and we'll go on to the actual movement. She's turning her head towards the leg that she's using. It's integral to getting a coordination. Now she's doing brush step, 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 step up. Yay. And brush up, 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 two, three, and plie, and stretch, and plie, and stretch. This is the very basic form, just to get you used to it. A little technical note, make sure you always fully stretch your knees to build up strength on all those demi plies. Turn around and show it from the back so you can see it just a bit better. Notice how her back is nice and flat, no shoulder blades pinching, she's going faster. Brush, step, step, brush, step, step, or down, up, up, down, up. A bit of a historical note, a polonaise is often seen in the processional dances in classical ballets such as Swan Lake and Sleeping Beauty. It's a very elegant, courtly movement. Again, we take two steps forward to a demi point or half toe, and the third step is a brush, similar to the tendu soutenu of the adage and the brush we just did. A brush is actually related to a degage from our bar.
I am the queen of the swans. I can see over there. I am crying a lake of my mother's tears. One bad man turned me into a swan. But if a man promises to love me and marry me and swears to love me forever, I shall be a swan no more. The next segment, I'm going to work on my upper back. Lay face down on the floor. Abdominals engaged, belly button in. Lift up, engaging that thoracic spine. I'm initiating some porter bra because I'm trying to keep the back flat and open across and wide the shoulder blades. As I lift my arms to fifth high, my trapezius stays down. I'm spiraling to the right. Opening the shoulder, engaging the muscles on either side of your spine, your back extensor muscles, really good for your arabesque attitudes, preparation of fourth for your pirouette to create that spiral in your back. On to more port de bras, finishing with that classic Pilates swimming. So I'm down on the floor, lift up to my swan back. Come up to a lunge, a pretty deep lunge on a bent knee. I'm taking my arms through third high and second and fifth high, depending upon the school of technique that you teach, what you might call those arms. But what I like about this is I'm having to keep my torso engaged to the core as I move my arms, which is really more helpful than just standing still and doing port de bras or keeping it a lunge. Keep the collarbones nice and wide. I'm reaching through a lunge and you're also getting a nice psoas stretch. And repeat and play back again as you wish to repeat the routine. This is a little detail of the lift of the upper back. Keep stretching, it's very important for any ballet student to keep stretching on their own. I have a few ballet floor bar videos that are a great help. The example before this in the gym were just a few exercises that are great to do in between your ballet classes to build up strength, flexibility, and work on some of the concepts of classical ballet.